Good morning. Morning. How are y'all? What's good? Babe, stop laughing at me. <laughs> you really serious? <laughs> I said it right. Good morning. Happy Monday. Welcome to September. Sorry. Welcome to September the second, the ninth month for things to happen. My name is Minister Shonda Tucker. I'm the executive pastor at Pursuit for His Presence Ministries. And this handsome man is my husband. Mm -hmm. What's your name, husband? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> my name is Mr. Al Tucker. Good morning. Mm, you Good put morning. a little bass in that, do you? What's your name? My name is Mr. Al Tucker. Yes. Good morning to everyone. How y'all doing this morning? Good morning, Mr. Uh, happy, uh, what's the day? Oh, the um, Labor Day. Mm. Hope y'all are off today, because I am. Mm. Yeah, came out to stop. Hope y'all have a glorious day. Regardless of what my wife might say. Mm. Okay. Here's my disclaimer. <laughs> I had a little tickle in my throat since Thursday. Thursday was my birthday. Started feeling a little on my birthday. And have been speaking to the symptoms. And all of the symptoms have gone except for a little nagging cough. Now, me and this cough is going to get it together. Okay, because this cough kept me from seeing baby Mallory yesterday. So I'm feeling some kind of way about that. And I wanted to go have breakfast with my husband this morning. And I don't feel like it. Some other stuff I wanted to do. We don't work on it. <laughs> Y'all were both off today. So <laughs> let me just apologize because this did not happen. And we get to go back to bed. So, yeah, we like two kids in the candy store. But God bless you. We give honor to our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. We love you so much, and we thank you for this opportunity. We give honor to the princess, baby Mallory. Welcome, little one. She is two weeks old and just adorable. We give honor to our overseer, Dr. Cesar Richburg and Mother Ella Richburg. They are both in town, I believe. So we love you. Hate that we didn't get to see you yesterday, but you didn't want me breathing all over you. Y'all hear how I sound? Got a little bass in my voice. Um, and we also give honor to Mother Blanton, who I'm sure is making her way to Nashville so she can love on baby Mallory. So we love you, love you, love you. God bless you. We give honor to our church family, Pursuit for His Presence Ministries. We had an awesome service yesterday. If you didn't get to see it, go back and watch. It was amazing. Um, and this Wednesday, we're going to have Bible study at 6.30. And then Saturday is going to be prayer call at 10 a.m. And then Sunday, we have 9 a.m. discipleship class, which is awesome. And um, and then service starts at 10. Okay? So. We, we don't we have a calendar we go. Mm. But thank you for pointing that out. There's no encounter this week. It's been delayed until October because we're having... A soap while the men are out at the movies. Hmm? I check out the movies. You got me soap on, sir? Okay, all right. Uh, hold on, I might come, come home for the soap. You not going to the movies? <laughs> what is happening? No, I ain't, I ain't had a good response yet, so we're we going to see how it works. Life, real time. But anyway, a um, lot going on. So, because we are, I feel like my voice sounds terrible. Because we are off today and uh, the Lord is giving us the opportunity to rest. This morning when I was waking up, I, I had like a waking dream. So usually... I can remember it because it's like, you know how you're, you can't tell if you're still asleep or you're all the way awake. And I was having this dream about, I was going to this HBCU in the area 
um, to help one of my coworkers. And when I got to the HBCU, I helped her, but then I was like uh, walking down the hall and I came upon this group of professors who were all sitting together and talking. And one of the ladies was like, I know you. And I was like, how are you? And she said, I'm good. She said, we're, we're discussing a question and I wanna know what you think about it. And I said, okay. And she said, are you an optimist, a pessimist, or are you just trying to get through every day? You just trying to make it through the day. And I was like, I don't like those choices. And, and they started laughing. And I, she said, well, okay, how would you answer it? And I said, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. And because I follow where he leads, I have hope. So there's hope in every day for me because I'm following my savior. So as I was saying that, I woke up. And so hubby and I hadn't even discussed it because I was just gonna ask him if he's an optimist or a pessimist or if he's just trying to get, get through the day. And um, he, the Lord put a question on his heart. What was it? <laughs> I this morning, I, this is how I, I, I had got up on, I got up this morning, but got up early. Read and word and everything. So I was in the bathroom, and Lord put this question on my heart this morning, and um, the question is, um, oh, because <laughs> I, 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 when we asked him, he, he asked me that question, but the question is, um, is God the most important thing in your life? So most people would say, yeah, God is the most important thing in my life. But so he brought some stuff back to my remembrance that I used to do years ago. All right, I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. You know, football, didn't, football season started next week, you know. And I seen times when Cowboys on, when they played the one o'clock game, I wouldn't even go to church. I stayed at home, really, I was going to watch the game. And why? The church started at 11 o'clock. I could have been, I might have missed on the first quarter, but no, me, I'm going to sit at home, I'm sit at home, I'm, I'm going to watch the Cowboys from start to finish. He know most, they might have lost. Put it, put it this way, God, Cowboys let me down a whole lot more times than they got, but God ain't never let me down. So, you know, so that didn't, I don't even know, I don't even know why my frame of thinking was like that, but that, I was in the world, I was just crazy, doing crazy stuff back right then, but cause now that wouldn't happen at all. Because, even because even with technology, now I can record the game, but even that, if I record and they lose, I ain't watching it, I, the delete, yeah, delete button, delete that one. But the only thing is, when the, the question was, do what is God the most important thing in your life? So then I got to think, well, God is the most important thing in your life. Because I went, then I got to think about some more stuff. Is, what would you show, if God is the most important thing in your life, how are you showing God he's the most important thing in your life? So then I had to think, the way I got this morning, read the word, and I said, then, I said, what else am I going to do today? Mm. I got to think of things I might do today. I said, where, where are you putting God at in that? Mm. So then I had to think again, well, maybe I need to ask God what he want me to do today. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not it's not no question to give me what I'm going to ask y'all, but just ask yourself, you know, you, everybody wants to say God's the most important thing in life, but is we showing God he's the most important thing in life? Is we loving on God like he's loving on us? What well, is the scripture? Hey. Hang on, hang on. Oh, no. <laughs> the scripture, but, um, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, see, that's what you get. Because he's being me. All right, Matthew 6.33. I'm going to give you two versions. I like both of them. The NLT and the, the Passion Translation. The NLT says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. The Passion Translation says, So above all, constantly seek God's kingdom and his righteousness. Then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. I love the scripture because I think it ties together what both of us got this morning about making God a priority. For me, when someone was asking me in a dream, am I optimist or pessimist or I'm just trying to get through life? My response was, I'm following God. And because I'm following him, I'm always hopeful. 
hubby got is God the most important thing in your life. The two things come together in that scripture. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto you. I used to think that you couldn't have anything. It, almost like you were taking like a vow of poverty or something if you were serving the Lord. Look at this hummingbird. <laughs> kingdom out here at the tuck of the state of Trinity. Um and I I used to think that, you know, you you were just, you know, living off the land and just, you know, doing whatever if you were really sold out for the Lord. The Lord does not have a problem with you having things. One more time for the people in the back. The Lord does not have a problem with you having things. He has a problem with the things having you. He does not want you to want the gift more than you want the giver. Just to put it in layman's terms, I can remember my mom. Um, I talk about this all the time because I think she did such a great job at Christmas. Um, she set our expectations in a realistic realm so that it was still... A wonderful holiday but we weren't thinking that there was some Caucasian heavyset man coming down our chimney and leaving gifts for us she was <laughs> like no she and she would tell me now don't go to school and tell these other kids that because you could crush their little hearts but she was like there's no Santa Claus coming here it is your parents it is the people who love you who are getting gifts for you and and so when we would open our gifts on Christmas my mom would, would be looking at us like, you know, before you, once you opened it and saw what it was, you went to whoever gave it to you and said, thank you, Matt gave him a hug, whatever. She was real big on that, real big on um, acknowledging what people did. And I tell you all, y'all all the time, my um, dad used to say, no one has to be kind to you. So when they are, say thank you. God wants to bless us with nice things. He wants us to have things, but he doesn't want to give you the thing. And then you forget about God. Like, like hubby said, there's nothing wrong with him watching football. Watch football. Enjoy it. But you can make time for God and still go ahead. Um, the church um, that he came out, out of back home, Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. God bless you, Pastor Corey Lee. Love you. Um, sometimes they wear jerseys to church. I think that's the coolest thing because it's acknowledging, hey, we're football fans. Who love the Lord. We're going to come serve the Lord. Then we're going to go watch the game. There's nothing wrong with that. Keep the priority of the main thing being the main thing. God gave me this husband. He is amazing. He's wonderful. He's not perfect. But he's perfect for me. But dare I put him in front of God. He used to say to me when we were dating. I want you to love God more than you love me. Because I love God more than I love you. I was like you said what? <laughs> You said, what now? <laughs> and and the first time it hit my ears, I was feeling some kind of way. Like, wait now, wait now, what? And then as I thought about it, okay, I do need you to love God more than you love me. Because you can't know how to love me without loving God. If you don't have a relationship with God, it's going to be some problems. I'm trying to tell you. There can be some problems now, but I can go to God. I can go to God. He can go to God. We can go to God together. I've tried it without God. It wasn't that nice. Um, <laughs> this way is better. Now, you could do it. You could do it without him, but I'm just trying to tell you, it's better with him. So, we want God more than we want anything else. I, I, I'm not going to put him in God's place. He is not God. Now, on this earth, most important person to me ever. Ever. is God... And my husband. Everybody else kind of fall in line after that. Um, that's the order that God set, right? But if this, we just throw this in for free. If you're believing God for a mate, a spouse, a boo thing, do not get the relationship and forget about God. Because it's going to be hell on earth and you're going to be mad because you're going to say, now God, you sent me this man, you sent me this woman, and they're crazy. <laughs> no one is perfect. So in order for this relationship to work, we have got to stay committed to God. I've got to ask God what's going on with him. 
what's happening with him. Show me how to love him. Show me um, how to be a help me suitable. Show me um, how to point him back to God. How to encourage him to spend time with the Lord. I don't have a problem. When his eyes open in the morning after he goes to the bathroom, he is getting in his word. I don't have a problem the first with that. He's going to say good morning when he get up. But he's getting in his word. I don't have any problem with that. We were talking one time about... He had friends that didn't like that. <laughs> but why would I not want him to serve the Lord? Serve the Lord with gladness. Yes, get in your word. What did he tell you about me? Because get in your word. And I'm doing the same thing. Before my feet hit the floor um, and I start my day, I'm in my word. I... I I won't, I, if I'm late for work because I'm reading the Word of God, so be it. Um, I, he knew I wasn't going to move this morning because I had taken some cough medicine last night. And I was kind of uh, dragging. He had got up, done everything, and I was still, like, not all the way up. But when I woke up, I'm reading my Word. If I had to get on here at 738, that's what it was going to be because I needed that time with God first. So God wants you to have a good life. He wants you to have things. One more time for the people in the back. He is okay with you having things. He does not want the things to have you. Dare say he give you the thing and you forget about him. You, you, you do that with your children. Um, you give them something and then they forget that, that you bought the cell phone. So do they talk crazy? You're like, what? Wait, what? Um, I remember we bought our daughter a car when she was 16. And um, my ex-husband told her, you don't need no new friends. You got all the friends you need. You don't need any new friends. And he was telling her that because he was like, this car is going to attract people who want what you have. And, and, and it was just such a great statement. He said, so she was like, what? And she didn't believe him, I don't think, because when people started coming around and asking her for rides, and we had a firm rule. Ain't nobody riding. Nobody riding. If we pass you going through town and somebody in that car, it's going to be consequences. You ain't put them keys up. So it was like she would have to call me and say, can I give so and so a ride? Nope. That was the answer. So after a while, she just stopped calling me. But it was like, <laughs> you don't need any new friends because people are going to come after the thing more than they want to be. You can't tell who's genuine. Okay? So it's just... If you're wrestling with that today, if you're wrestling with how do I keep all of this going and how do I, you know, order my life so that I can enjoy my life and I can still serve God, you have to be um, minister to Master Easy is teaching discipleship. And if you haven't joined us, join us on Sundays at 9 a.m. It's powerful. But last Sunday she was talking about you have to be fully immersed in this. This has to be a lifestyle for you. This cannot be just something you do on Sundays or a panic button you push when all hell is breaking loose. To genuinely get the full benefit of what God has for you, this has to be a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Every day. It doesn't mean you can't have fun. doesn't mean you can't go out with your friends. doesn't mean you can't enjoy your life. But this has to be a lifestyle that you include God in every aspect of your life. He, he wants a relationship. He doesn't want it just to be something you do on Sundays out of, out of religious um, rhetoric and doctrine and, and don't have a relationship with him. Invite him into every decision that you make. I remember, um, and I still do this, I pray about parking spaces. If I go to the mall, which... I don't. If I go to the grocery store, um, where do you want me to park? Something as simple as that. It is it's not that I don't know how to park a car. I want to know what he thinks about it. I, I want to know what he thinks about what I'm planning to put on to where to work. Not that I can't make the decision, but I want to invite him into it. So that when I ask him, is this your covenant husband that you want me to have? I've already got a relationship with him, so I know his voice. When I'm asking him about the little things, the big things become easier. Okay? Get me in. I like that. All right, this is what we're making. You know, just, just telling y'all, just make God for, for, for what? Well, first place in your life. First, the first priority in your life. So you know God gave me this beautiful, gorgeous wife. I won't have her if I ain't put him for her. Mm, that's good. Because, mm, being 
We ain't talking about the court shit. We not. We ain't. We ain't doing that. We're talking about the court shit, Todd. No. <laughs> but no, like I'm saying that, that, that like she was saying earlier, really, no, ain't like God wants you to have things. Ain't, ain't like God wants you to have a relationship with other people because we can't live in this world by ourselves. We need a relationship with other people. Especially good God people anyway. We need some good God Godly influence. But he just wanted to be first place in your life. He just wanted to be, he wanted to be above everything else. Because the scripture says, it's so above all, comes to seek God's kingdom. It says so above all. That means everything. That means even my wife. My wife tells she got she got a little guy wants to love me. Because it means I'm gonna let her down. God don't love her down. I mean I, I try not to let her down, but it, it gonna happen. It it it, 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 it <laughs> <laughs> it may happen, but you know. Don't do it. <laughs> it ain't because I want to happen, but you know, I'm human. I'm, I'm in the flesh. And then I'm just saying to you, that I said, God won't have a relationship with you, but He won't be first place in your life above everything else. And you know, something you know, you know, and people say, how how do we do that? And it's it's not hard. I mean, it, well, if you love something, you will spend time with. It. For me, I, when I first get when I first met my way. And you know, and I, and, then I, and, I, and I, we were recording everything, and I spent time with. For me to know her, I had to spend time with. This is like God. And you, how you know God? Unless you, the only way you know God, you had to spend time with. You had to get into His Word, get to study, study His Word, meditate His Word, and ask God to you know God. I don't, I don't understand this, but God would He give you wisdom, He give you knowledge, and He just asked Him, God, show me, reveal this to me, reveal this. Tell me how the scripture, how to apply the scripture in my life. I mean, He do all those things. I mean. I ain't get like I ain't get like this overnight now. It, it took I mean I, it's, it's, a, it's a faith walk every day. That's why every day I get up and read my word, study my word, because I need more God in me than I need anything else. Cause without Him, I ain't got no wife. Without Him, I ain't got no job. Without Him, I ain't got no I ain't got no vehicle. I ain't got nothing. <laughs> I need Him to maintain all that. You know, we all as Lord as you know, it would, would, you know, I'm very passionate about, especially about my family and everything. Have a relationship with God, knowing God, you know. And so every night now, I'm asking the Lord, "We know it's time." <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, I have quite, quite me and my brother had this conversation not too long ago. I don't think he really liked when I asked him that because and I'm like, "What are you doing with your time? I don't even, I mean, don't there ain't no time. You ain't got no time to sit around moping and everything. You ain't do. You got plenty of time to spend your word. I mean, you 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 we we, we love to say we love God." But is we showing God we love Him? Is we showing God that we that He He first did He take first place in our life? That's my goal. You know, just, just to show Him that He's the first. You know, take first place in my life. Like I said, I love my wife, but if I don't, but if I don't love God, He, he ain't, I ain't gonna be at the keyboard. Amen. Oh. <laughs> so it's not a way for me to keep her. I I got I got I got stand <coughs> for me. For me to just I just want to. You know, just have a, a, a good relationship with God. Well, I can go to Him about anything. I can ask Him about anything, and that's what we should be doing anyway. You know, a lot of people are like, well, how do you know the voice of God? Mm, the, only way, the only way you can know the voice of God, you got to get His Word. You got to be to know Him, know when He's talking to you, and He will speak to you through His Word. When you read His Word, sometimes you, be, I know when when I first got to the Word, I had this hunger and thirst for the Word that was unreal. It seemed like I just couldn't get enough. I mean, I just kept, I mean, I just read all throughout the day, but then I got, I got to the point where I'm doing all this reading, but I won't really retain that. So I said, God, I need to be able to retain this stuff. I be, I, I want to be able to, when, when, when the devil come back, I need something to fight him off with. And see, and God would do that for you. He would give you, the, he would, give, he would, so you can speak to your situation. I mean, mm, that's good. This thing, <laughs> out this morning, he, you know, we was, we was talking to him about, you know, do um. Do we love do do is my friend he first place in in in, in, I, in my life and I had to think about how one time he wasn't but now I think he is and and, and, he, and he brought to my attention about my wife see my wife is different <laughs> she's different than anybody else so see, he brought this he said if you're, he gave this example if your wife was in the hospital and, and, and you woke and, and Sunday morning came around and you walked in the hospital and didn't go to church who do you think she would say? My wife, she was like, "Why oh, you in that church?" She said, "You're not the hill of God here." She said, "What, what, what good are you doing me here?" <laughs> that would be the, now, 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 now. Everybody wife is like that, but my wife is. And so, see, she, because she want me to have 
she want me to have a relationship with God. She, cause she's like, if you here with me, how do you, Pastor Kendra may have a word for us. How are you gonna get if you here with me? And and it's not now biblically, God created the family before He established the church. So we are not saying to put the church in front of your family. That's not it. What He's saying is for us, because I'm gonna be all right. I need him to go get some word and bring it to me. Go let the people of God pray over you and then bring it to me. My first thought is let's get to the people of God. Let's get some some confirmation. Let's get some agreement for my healing. You sitting here watching me and looking at the monitor's beat and, and looking at me and looking worried. That's not helping me. Go get me some help. And that help comes from God. And so the, he, he's right. I, on a Sunday morning, and he walked in there, and I'm like, you are a minister of the gospel. Why are you in here with me? I'm all right. I'm here of the Lord. I may be in here releasing the anointing of God. That's how I see it. I need you to get to God. It is, it is our lifeline. It is, it is how we exist. And, and I hear in the spirit some of you saying, okay, what does that look like? Here's what I'm telling you. The first question is, do you think you have an abundant life? O only you know the answer to that. Is it abundant in some areas, but in other areas, not so much? Okay, so let's pick one of the areas that it's not abundant in. Um, finances, your children, um, your relationships, your health, um, whatever it is, right? So there is an area of your life that's not abundant. Um, and, and you're like, but I love the Lord. I serve him. I go to church. I read my word. What's happening? This is his answer to whatever the situation is. Sometimes before I pick up my Bible, if there's something going on, I may say, God, nothing is hidden from you. I need wisdom for this situation. Show me what it is that you want me to, to learn about the situation. And I'll just open my Bible and start reading. In this particular instance, I open it to Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29 and 11 is one of my favorite scriptures. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to give you a future and a hope. And I would just meditate that scripture. You got to read everything in here from cover to cover. You don't have to do that. Just whatever scripture leaps off the page and speaks to you. When we meditate the word of God, it gives him an opportunity to highlight that thing in our life. So if, if I'm going through and I open my Bible and I read Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. For I know. God knows. God knows what's going on. God has a plan. Can I just be confident in the fact that God has a plan? Because my plans are not working, but God has a plan. He is the master. He is Alpha and Omega. He knows the end of a thing from the beginning. Okay, so God has a plan. He knows what the plan is. And his plan is to give me a future. That means this is not it. This place that I'm in right now is not my final destination. That he has more for me. He has a future for me. And a hope. He wants me to have hope. He wants me to have joy. There's some positive things up ahead. So if I stop here, if I put my kickstand right here, then I'm going to miss what he has for me. Um, my brother in love has the same. We were joking one day. Or we were talking about something. Somebody was talking about suicide. And he said, if y'all ever hear that I committed suicide, he said, y'all might investigate that thing. He said, because I believe that tomorrow will be better. So we joke about that all the time, that tomorrow will be better. You can be having a bad day. You can, can be having a bad season in your life. But that's not when you quit. Keep moving forward. If Jeremiah 29 11 says that God has a plan and a future and a hope for my life, I've got to move forward to get it. The, the word says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. There are going to be seasons of disappointment. There's going to be seasons of grief. There's going to be times of sorrow. There's going to be seasons of lack. But I've got to keep moving forward, believing that God has a plan and a purpose for my life. And that if I'm going to get it, I've got to move forward. We were joking yesterday about, um, well, I, I used to say that thing with my chest, that I would never get married no more. <laughs> you, you can have that. 
I used to say all the time, when I get to heaven, the first thing I'm going to ask the Lord is, why did you create marriage? Because I did not understand it. I could not fathom why he would do that. I, I just... None of it made sense to me. I've been married for 20 plus years and it was terrible. Um, produced a beautiful daughter out of it. But it, I just, in my light and fast mind, I could not make sense of it. So when other people at my, in my church family were saying they wanted to get married and they were so excited about getting married, I was like, God bless you with that. Wasn't no hate. I wanted them to get married and have a wonderful marriage. For me, I was going to be married to the Lord. I was cool with that. I mean, I was so cool with that. Y'all just don't even know. I had made my mind up that I could serve God better if I just stayed single and sold out to the Lord. That was my commitment. I was like, I am never getting married again. But my pastor said, why do you keep saying that? Did the Lord tell you that? I ain't asked him. <laughs> she was like, you need to ask him because you have an anointing to be a wife. Right. And it's my whole pastor. This is the voice of God for me when I can't hear from God for myself. My whole pastor, just out of the blue, says, why do you keep saying that? You need to ask God about that. So I asked him, reluctantly. <laughs> what, he wasn't even a, a thought to me. I was like, is it your perfect will for me to be a wife again? It was a loud yes with some bass. I was like, oh, wait, maybe I asked it wrong. And I asked him again, and I got a yes. And I was like, oh, my God. So I had to lay down what I thought was going to be the future of my life, which was I was content with, I was happy with, serving the Lord with gladness and being single and not having to worry about anybody else but me. And he was like, this is not, that's not my will for you. Yeah, if you're going to serve me, you have to follow my will. It was later on that Tuck came into the, to the picture. But I had to already have made my peace with the Lord that I wanted his will more than my will. Now, best thing ever. Best thing since life spread. I cannot imagine my life without him in it. It brings, he's such a teammate. He's such a partner. He's such a covering for me that sometimes it, it makes me, I don't have to be anybody but Shonda. And that's good enough for him. I don't have to act a certain way, behave a certain way. He said to me one day, I am not intimidated by you. And I wasn't trying to intimidate him, but I needed to hear that because so many people had been. But he was like, I'm not intimidated by you. Do you? Okay. Well, doing me means we're going to serve the Lord with gladness. Doing me means we're going to be at church. Doing me means um, I, I have a heart for God's people. So I might stop in the middle of the store and start ministering to someone who needs help. He's used to seeing all of that, and none of it, none of it bothers him. He just rolls with it. I, he asked me what I wanted for my birthday. I want you to speak with me, to, to, to minister the Word of God with me. Those are, so when he says he knows his wife, that I would be upset if he came to the hospital on Sunday morning instead of going to church first, it's true. But he knows that about me. So God can give you what you need that fits you perfectly you know how somebody who really really knows you can give you the best gifts and you're just like i didn't even know i wanted this that's what i'm talking about thank you holy spirit those are the kind of gifts that god gives when you're just like i didn't even know i, I wanted this but i love this i didn't know i like this but i love this this is an awesome gift i got so many gifts for my birthday god bless you to each of you who did that um one of my friends, Dr. Roz, sent me this amazing floral bouquet. I was like, this is gorgeous. This smells so good. Where did you get this from? This is amazing. I got things that I didn't even know. Um, one of my uh, employees bought me uh, breakfast, and it was just, it was like bacon and, and donut holes, which was so funny. But it was like the perfect breakfast for me. Don't y'all eat that every day. It was a long time thing. <laughs> <laughs> but when people know you, they can give you things. But think about God, the creator of the whole universe. He has got gifts and blessings and things for your life that will blow your mind, that will, that will be better than you could ever imagine. He, he gives perfect gifts. The word of God says every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father. And he woke us up this morning to tell you 
He wants to give you gifts, but he does not want you to get the gift and forget about the giver. Keep the priority. Keep the main thing, the main thing. Put him first and then enjoy the gifts that come from him. But still, hold that gift with an open hand. I love my husband. A woman we were watching yesterday, and I was like, anybody leaving nobody? Oh, um, some Hallmark movie with a guy, with a guy wife died. We watching a Hallmark movie, and I was like, "Ain't nobody dying, ain't nobody leaving nobody. We you know, we going together, you know, just just crazy." But because I can't find them, first I didn't want a husband. Now I got a husband. Now I'm like, "Lord, don't take him. Mm -hmm. We we got to grow old together." Because I can't imagine what it would be like not to have him in my life. But I still trust God. I trust God, and. and However many days that I have with him, I'm going to enjoy every single one of them because it is a gift from God. He's not perfect. I'm not perfect, but we're perfect for each other. God wants to give you a gift that is perfect for you. You can have the gift and you can have the giver. You just got to keep it in the right order, okay? Anything else? I think we're good. <laughs> so not to get married again, cause that was that was that was my thing too. Right? When, when we first even when we first started talking, we just had, I mean for, I we had, we first started talking. I came to Tennessee. We just went out and done. I hadn't seen in years and all. Uh, just friends. <laughs> just friends. Somehow we get you know we got talking about that. And I, I, I think we told you to say no. We, we ain't trying to do it no more. Right? She asked me to give me no. We ain't trying to do it no more. But I had, once I had to ask, ask the Lord, Lord, you ever send me another wife, make sure she's a godly woman. Did I know what I was asking for? I did. Make sure she what? A godly woman. Mm -hmm. Did I know what I was asking for? I didn't. But he sent me so much more than what I even thought. I mean, mm -hmm. my wife is a blessing. She's a, she's a gift from God. And every day I, I, I thank God for that gift because she is a gift from God because like I said, I, I asked for one thing, but he's with, with her. He sent so much more, and and that's that's, that's anything. Even which I mean, a lot of us asking for kids or whatever. God will give you all those things, but like she said, don't you can't put them over top of God. You see that you know, God is the giver. I mean, he the one that he he's the, he, he get the best gifts ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, he gave my wife. He gave I mean, our daughters. Yeah, I mean he, he's he's the best he's he, he the best gift giver ever. But you cannot put them gifts over top of God. You still you need you plus you can't have God to maintain these gifts. Oh my gosh! Because you ain't got God in life. Your your relationship with your kids might be raggedy. I mean, because mm -hmm. you, you you my mom, you know my mom and dad used to pray all the time. Pray for pray pray, pray for us children. You know, and I think when that yeah, you was you was just a. Wild child. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a good thing my mom and dad were praying for me because I don't know why I'd be if they won't. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, who? Mm, you probably won't. Mm, my, my parents probably need work behind me and, and my siblings. It won't be by myself. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but I grew up in a home like that with my mom, my, 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 my mom prayed, my dad prayed. And I thank God for, I thank God for having parents that did pray. They gave me a blueprint of how to get through this life. And then, did I always. I, I I I didn't want to follow the blueprint at all. Mm -hmm. I had to, I'll make my own way. I tried for a number of years. It didn't work. <laughs> it did not work. But I thank God he didn't he I thank God he didn't let the deal the deal with kill me while I was in my mess. He gave me a chance to get myself, you know, get him right with him, get a relationship with him and, and learn that I need him more than I need anything else. Cause I there's some places I can be in, I'm like, if it weren't for God, I wouldn't be here right now. I mean, so, I mean, it weren't for him, I mean, sometimes I ain't had nobody but him. I mean, I'm sure my family was, all, was always with me, so it was there for me, but I had to call, I had to call on him. I had to call on, I had to call on God, look, I need your help. I need, show me how to live this life, show, because my way is flawed. I mean, I tried my way for a long time, and it put me in some places I should have been in. So, God, I need you to help me. I mean, I need you to show, show me how to live a life you want me to live, not by my will, by your will, because my will is flawed. 
I mean, damn. I, I mean, sometimes I get some crazy thoughts now, but I dismiss them fast. I know oh, that they ain't what God wants for me. And, 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 and then people ask, how you know what God wants for you? Read his word. Amen. His word will tell you what he wants for you. He want, he, God wants you to have abundant life. He wants you to have abundant life, but he wants you. God do things in decent order. He ain't going to do you nothing that you can't handle. I mean, I've been asking for a million dollars for a long time. But then I, but now I don't ask for a million dollars because mm -hmm. I, I feel it ain't enough. <laughs> but, so what? If God was giving to him to ask for, I might be dead now, mm -hmm. doing some foolish with it. He gave to me now, I'm, 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 I'm blessing a lot of people. That, that's not, I mean, that's what I'm going to do. I mean, I'm going I'm 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 to spread the joy. But um, it ain't about money. It ain't about possessions. It's about your relationship with God. That's, that's the main thing. That's the only thing we basically talk about just for this last 30, 40 minutes. You know, just have a relationship with God and put Him first in everything you do. That million dollar prayer, I'm trying to tell you. When I was asking God about that many, many years ago, He said, what are you doing with the money you have now? He asked me, He said, a million dollars would kill you. And now, like Hubby said, we've come to the realization that's not a lot of money. It sounds like a lot, but in today's economy, what if he gave us a million dollars, I would run to him and say, what do you want us to do? I wouldn't spend a dime of it without asking him, what is it that you want us to do with this? Because we can come up with some stuff that's some foolishness. But what is it that you want me to do with this? And it, just do that today. Just think about if you had a million dollars. If God bless you with a million dollars, what would you do? Some of the answers that we we say sounds like little kids. I would get this, and I get this, and I do this, and I would do this. Ask the Lord. Really sit with that thing. And then you start to see why you don't have a million dollars yet. Because he already <laughs> knows that you would be over into some foolery. Because whatever it is that's in you, money magnifies it. We can watch TV and see with these people who have tons of money, what they do, the decisions that they make, how they live their lives. And when they lose it all or something happens, they, they can't handle it. So... It's not that God can't give you a million dollars. He definitely can. But we've got to be good stewards over what we have now and show him, I, I trust you more than I trust this money. I, don't, I put no confidence <clears throat> in this. I put my confidence in you. Show me what you do. And I used to remember, I, I told the Lord one time, I want to be able to write um, $10,000 checks. And he was like, you got to start somewhere. Where is your tithe and offering? Can you write that check? Oh, okay. Let me get off of that. So yeah, I get mad. But yeah, so so God is not. He doesn't have a problem with you having things. He has a problem with the things having you. He can bless you and blow your mind with His goodness. He can exceed. The word says He's now unto Him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. He is able to bless you beyond what you're dreaming, your biggest dreams. He can go beyond that. He's looking to see, can he trust you? Can he trust you with the blessing? Can he trust you with the husband? And then we will never see you at church again. Can he trust you with a million dollars? Then we will never see you at church again. Can he trust you with... Uh, Whatever it is that you're believing God for and then your relationship with him falls off and we don't see you again until you hit rock bottom. He, he's not playing that game. He, he wants to know that he's going to have your heart, that you are going to have a relationship with him and that you're going to stay committed to him. Okay. All right. Amen. Oh, well, one more thing. I mean, I don't know about God. I just want to tell you a few weeks ago. Um, we, uh, the men of pursuit got together, you know, just, just, um, just to boost Pastor Kelly, you know, just again, you know, my mother had just been born. So we've just given him words and encouraged me everything. And that morning, before that morning before I God asked me, God gave me a series of questions asking me. I mean, it's the, then, then they had asked that day and everything, but the, the the first question was, on a scale of one to ten, how you rate your relationship with God. You know, and um, he told me he's don't don't you know just 
after the question, but they don't, they don't, you don't want to answer right then. Because you want, you want, so, because to me, I, when he, when he brought that question to my church, I sit in the bed with an hour. I'm sitting there thinking, then where is my relationship with God on a scale of one to ten? I'm not even tell you how, how well I read it myself, is, but as I said, I read myself in, I kept thinking, what, what, this is what I'm doing, this is what I ain't doing. It kept going down. I was like, hold on, why? Am I? <laughs> I said, that ain't where I'm supposed to be at. So, when, if you just, just think, well, on, your, on your relationship with God, read, on, read yourself on your relationship with God. Don't, don't just use your fast. Think about where you is with God and what God, you know, what, what, what he, not what he mean to you. And, when, and then you, then, because then you think about, you know, when you knew you, I don't think nobody attend, but God. But, <laughs> But um, <clears throat> cause once you reach once you reach your relationship, you will realize things you need to work on, things you need to do for God, things you need to do to improve your relationship with God. So yeah, just reach, just reach yourself and, and, and be honest with yourself. I mean, cause they, nobody got to know but you. Be honest with yourself, and then you realize this is things I need to do. Some things that I'm not doing that I need to be doing to improve my relationship with God. Cause one of the things too is, you know, God gave us a great commission to go and spread His word to everybody. You know, and, and, and I, that's one thing I mean, is, is I'm doing that. I'm sure I'm over here talking to y'all this morning, but when I get off Facebook Live, what I'm doing Tuesday through the rest of the week is I'm spreading God's word. And people, when people see me, they, they see God in me by, by the way I act, the way I live my life. And, and that's the thing that I, I'm not worried about people, how people try to, how people, well, you know, we don't want to judge nobody, but I'm not worried how people, what people think about me. How, because, hmm, I was, I was, I was, I was a hum, hum one time. <laughs> but you know, but um, I'm not, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't yeah, yeah, I can't worry about how what people think, what think about me, because they, they ain't got no hell in hell to put me in. Only God can do that. So, if I'm doing what God want me to do, if I'm doing, if I'm living the life that God want me to live. If I'm, worthy of, uh, if I'm worthy of the gift that he had given me, if I'm worthy of the of life he had given me, so that's, that's just me. I can't say how y'all do, but it's me. I'm all just constant on my mind all the time. If I'm, if I'm worthy of, of the things that God wants me to do, I mean, if I'm doing the things that God wants me to do, if I'm living my life for me, if I'm, if I'm living my life for God. That's good. If I'm helping God, if I'm helping to, if I'm kingdom building, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm turning down the kingdom. Mm. Well, y'all, we took a little bit longer than we normally do because neither one of us have to go to work today, so we might be going back to bed. But um, uh, this thing is really heavy on our hearts this morning about God wants you to assess where your relationship is. Where do you prioritize him um, in your life? And as you're asking for things, again, God wants you to have faith. There's not an issue with that. Um, he just wants you to have the right priority and keep him first. Keep the main thing, the main thing, because you can get all the things, but if you don't have him, it's nothing. It's nothing. The things, um, the word of God says, Proverbs 10, 22, the blessings of the Lord make one rich and add no sorrow with it. You don't want sorrowful things. And that's what happens when you don't have him in it. So keep him in it. Assess your relationship with him. Make sure you're giving him first place and 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 trust him. Trust him to exceed your expectation. He answers your prayers through his word. So stay in his word and stop wondering if it is his desire to bless you. Yes. <laughs> he satisfies his children with good things. He wants to bless you, but he also wants to know that you are not going to get the gift and forget about the giver. Amen. Okay. Okay. All right. You want to pray? <laughs> hey, husband. I'm sleepy. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity just to praise your holy name, yes, Father God. Father God, we adore you, Father God. We love you, Father God. Father God, we know there's nothing we can do without you, Father yes. God. So thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for 
You're weary, Father God. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary Cross for us, Father God. We just thank you for who you are in our lives, Father God. Father God, let us always put you first place in our lives, Father yes, God. Jesus. We can't do it another way, Father God. Without you, we will fail, Father God. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving us, Father God. Thank you for saving us, Father God. Yeah. Just thank you for walking and talking with us each and every day, Father God. So right in the name of Jesus, Father God, we open our hearts, we open our minds, Father God. We we'll let you in, Father God. To let you in is give us guidance and direction on this day, Father God. Father God, let's continue to talk with us, continue to walk with us, Father God. Continue to show us the error of our ways, Father God. Father God, just continue to chastise us, Father God, so we can get it right, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, right now, Father God, as we open our hearts and minds up, Father God, lead us and guide us, Father God, the way you want us to be led and guided. God, our will sometimes flow, Father God, Father God, but you know, we, you have, what is your perfect will for our lives, Father God? Father God, show us your perfect will for our lives, Father God. And Father God, let us walk worthy of the calling you put on our lives, Father God. Yes. Use us in a mighty way, Father God. Father God, let us just reach out to, just let each and every one of us to reach out to this dying world, Father God, and show that unconditional love you have shown us, Father God. Father God, just continue to teach us how to love each other, Father God. Continue to how to treat each other, Father God. Continue, just continue to show us how to live this life for you, Father God. Not by our will, but by your will, dear Lord. Because, you know, it, our will just sometimes just ain't, ain't right, Father God. Father God, let us continue to let our light shine for men and women to see it, but to glorify you, Father God. It's not about us, but all about you, dear Lord. And thank you, dear Lord. Just thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary Cross for all of us, Father God. Not only for mission of our sin, Father God, but for our will, but for our mental health, Father God, spiritual health, Father God, physical health, Father God. Father God, I just thank you, Father God. Thank you for who you are in our lives. And Father, even now, I thank you for your word that declares that Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Yes. God, I thank you for being the God who wants to satisfy us with good things. You are a good father. You are a good shepherd, God. And we thank you for your word, even in Jeremiah 29 and 11, that declares that you know the plans that you have for us, plans to give us a future and a hope. God, we want everything that you have for us. God, we're determined, God, to lay aside our will and to seek your perfect will for every area of our life. God, we don't want the things more than we want you. We don't want the gift more than we want the giver. God, we seek you first, according to Matthew 6, that declares, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto us. God, I thank you for my brother and sister in Christ who are watching God. I thank you, Father God, for reminding them that it is your desire to bless them, to be a blessing. I thank you, Father God, for developing your relationship with them. Father, as they draw closer to you, you draw closer to them. God, meet every one of their needs according to your riches and glory. Bless them to be a blessing, God. Make even their enemies to be at peace with them. God, bless their children. Bless their family. Bless their bloodline, God. Bless their health, God. Your word declares that healing is the truth children's bread. I decree and declare that as Jesus Christ is, so are we in this world, healthy, healed, and whole. God, we even pray for our nation, that we would truly be one nation under God. I thank you, Father God, for this opportunity to pray together, God. I thank you, Father God, for us being iron sharpening iron. Father God, there is no guilt, no shame, no condemnation. But this coming together is an opportunity for you to reveal yourself to us in a greater way. God, let us examine ourselves. Let us examine our relationship with you, God, so that we continue to keep the main thing, the main thing, and to keep you as our number one priority. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity to stand in the gap. Now, God, this prayer isn't perfect, but your love for us is. So so whatever it is we should be holding up on behalf of these your people God we decree and declare that it's done and it is done well in the master's name of Jesus Christ we pray amen amen listen God bless you as you go throughout your day and throughout your week again we give honor to our senior pastors Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton we give honor to our overseer Dr. Caesar Richburg and Mother Ella Richburg and the entire first family the Richburg family Calvin and Felicia and Peyton and Tiffany Morris and Manny Morris and Danny and Alex and baby Mallory <laughs> 
And also to Mother Blanton, who blessed us with the psalmist, Pastor Kevin. We give honor to each of you. You're not watching this by accident or by coincidence. We believe that God divinely navigated your steps to be right here, right now. Listen, if you're looking for an opportunity to sow, Pursuit First Presence Ministries is good ground to sow into. Not because we desire a gift, but we desire fruit that may abound to your account. Listen, if there's something that we need to be praying about, just put it in the comments or inbox us. And we will pray over it. We go back and pray over each of you. We love you with the love of Christ. Listen, it is God's desire to satisfy you with good things. God has no problem with you having things. He has a problem mm -hmm. with the things having mm -hmm. you. Okay. All right. I think that's all we have for you. Can I do it? I love you. We're going back to bed, yeah. All right. <laughs> love y'all. Have All a right. blessed day. Bye.